Oh, shoot. What happened? I just lost my... Well, looks like we are live without a beginning. So, folks, it had a little <laughs> glitch. Here we go. How can we say things? How can we use our voices for good? Good morning and welcome to Recipe for Success. My name is Nancy Giacalone. And in case you were unaware, today is International Happiness Day. So uh, it's a perfect day to have my guest, Alani Ray, um, with the Rattle to Wake series join me because she is an absolute ray of sunshine and Aww. brings happiness to all those she encounters. So Yay. I'm super I'm super excited. So I've been connected with Lonnie for quite a long time on LinkedIn, and um, we ended up commenting together on a post recently, and I'm like, I have to talk to her. I got to get her on my show. And she agreed, so I was super excited. Um, one of the things we connected about, which I thought was super interesting because I've never talked to anybody else that has been like this, was um, we were talking about the Myers-Briggs personality profiles, and we both said... We're either an INTJ or an ENTJ, depending on our circumstances and our environment. And for those of you unfamiliar with that, it means we are extroverted or introverted, depending on our environment. We don't need to go into the other ones because, um, but but I, I was like, okay, that's totally my person. So, woohoo! Yeah. Yes. Lonnie, <laughs> is yes. he? Um, so, um, Lonnie is the editor in chief of the Rattled Awake series. She's a story development coach. She is a concierge book producer. She's a multi-show podcast host, and she's agreeing to come on my little podcast. And she is an author message consultant. So I'm just beyond thrilled to have you. Welcome, Thank Lonnie. You. And I would love for you to introduce yourself to our audience. Okay. Well, um, I am the epitome of uh, a Pippi Longstocking. I decided to embrace that and become an adventurer in life. Um, I am uh, told I'm quirky, and I guess that's okay because Robin Williams made a living at it. And um, I have loved um, promotions and uh, promotional marketing and writing. I, when I was little, I invented cards and um, and created, uh, you know, paper formatted things, postcards. That was how I got to know Mark Victor Hansen, actually, is that I was making um, handmade hot pink postcards or envelopes, and I'd staple them closed and send them off. And he said he always looked for my postcards in the six bags of mail because not everybody wrote fan mail. Some people weren't happy about chicken soup yet. And I was thrilled. I'm like, you're the bee's knees, you know? And so, yeah, I've always been... Um, a, a creator and and a, a sort of a, a poet, I guess. Uh, you know, Dr. Seuss still lives up in this head. And um, and when my, when I heard no, I said why not, and then I just went and did it. That's been my my life. I love that. And you know what, quirky is good because there's only <laughs> one you. Why try to be anybody else? So Indeed. just yes. just embrace it. Yes. So I one of the reasons that I was excited to talk to you is I'm a huge fan of. Um, brand messaging and marketing. And I love doing it through storytelling. And that's only something I've really, to be honest with you, I'd say that I've embraced in the last five years. I was probably doing it before without thinking about it. But now it's a conscious part of how I communicate to my clients, potential clients, to my members, to my podcast audience, because I've found that when you tell a story, you become real to the other person. You become more real. Um, so I'm interested, how did this become your life focus? Well, I started out as a promotional model and spokesperson. And um, my job was to tell the story of the brand. So, you know, some clever things we did, you know, like on Buick, selling Buicks, you know, lay across the car and say, hey, baby, want to drive me? You know? Yeah, <laughs> so right. we could use our personality behind it. But <laughs> that was fun stuff we did. Um, but really what I've discovered is it's all about the who that is you behind the what that you do. And then your special sauce. And so being able to, because vulnerable is valuable, um, sharing so that you're relatable. Not, uh, there is such a thing as too much information. There is. Agreed, agreed. 
and so uh you know i love that you know you 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 understand the value of sharing that side of you or a side of you that the audience finds relatable and i think probably the harder part for folks is figuring out which side how many stories what do i say what don't i say you know what's too much and i i think that uh, really is deciding what impact you want to have um, when you know your personality, if, if you need that to come across, you know, and as a, as an editor and, and writer myself, ghost writer too, um, that's when I take on the client's voice, but, uh, in every other format of, of writing, it's, it's really, what's your voice and your voice is, uh, your personality. And so sometimes in the workshops that I do, um, I'll have them do, um, uh, what do people say about you? What do you say about you? How do you want to be taken? How do you come across? And then go back and look at the way you wrote your chapter or your article and find ways to tweak it so that that personality of yours is evident. That's what matters. I love that. Um, I think that most people intuitively know where the line is as far as sharing. I think that they do. Um, I would hope that they do. <laughs> I saw that look on your face. So I'm saying I would hope that they I'm, do. I'm telling you. They Some don't people know. don't know the line. Okay. Uh, yeah, there is definitely a line. And you can tell a general story without going into details. Let me put it that way. Well, what I, what I'd like to say is um, I've also helped people to to interview better as a podcast guest trainer. And um, there have been a few times when people were sent my way from hosts who had to break the news. I'm sorry, we can't air your show. And um, I listened to the show or a couple of them that they did. And I said, that blubbering, that crying that you do on every show, not so much. I, it's really not. You're, you're still in your story. In publishing, we say you're either standing on top of your story or you're still really in it. And um uh, so that's a very authentic moment that this guy was having over and over again. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to be nice. Like, but the listeners don't, you know, you want to drag people through your trauma? Okay. All right. Well, ideally, you're, you're past it and you're looking back with a lantern and a laugh and going, here, I know the way. Let me help you out. That is the perfect statement right there. A lantern and a laugh and I know the way. Because that's really why we tell our story because yeah. if we're just telling it to tell it yeah that's there's no good reason to do that well yeah you want to have a purpose behind it um this book i i i was ghostwriter um i love to title things i seem to have an obsession with with ass because i have a book called how to deal with a dumbass <laughs> and I, her book is kicking karma's ass um, and she decided that, and she's not a coach. She's a business owner in Jersey running a construction company. Um, but she realized and through the work we did together that she had stories that showed resilience and perseverance all told with a twist of humor. And it was so that, and this is, this served a, a huge purpose so that Patty didn't have to keep telling her story. She would just say, go buy my book. In yeah. Jersey, yeah. That was my best Jersey accent I could do, but, uh, Yeah. Uh, so, so there are different reasons for sharing your story. Sometimes it's just a legacy, not just, that's huge. A legacy matters. You know, it's like, I have to get this off my chest. Um, and, and so some people just do it for, for personal reasons. Um, and, and then, you know, they're, they're done. That's okay. You know? Sure. There was a line on your website that really caught my attention and it said, how are you better, not bitter? And I think that kind of ties back into your storytelling, um, or I shouldn't say your storytelling, but if you if a person wants to tell a story, the point most of the time in using that personal story is to tell how that made you better. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Right, that's always the objective, isn't it? That uh, I turn the corner and and uh, here's the roadmap. Um, my personal ins inspiration behind that, what happened is um, you, you've prob probably seen the matrix. You're familiar with blue. Oh, pill, of red course. Pill, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I took the red pill and I didn't know it. I, and I fell into rabbit holes that I didn't know were there. And, um, and I discovered an awful lot going on and I was admittedly pretty freaking bitter about it. I was like, Holy crap. Look what, look what's going on. I, I didn't know. And 
And then I've learned since then, like there's two more pills. There's the black pill. Did you know that? No. That's, that's yes. That's from, that's the next step. You see what the heck's going on and then you're pissed. <laughs> and I was like, I know that feeling. I was mad about it. And I didn't want to stay there because that's where bitterness comes in. The next one is the white pill. And that's what the Rattled Awake series is really about, is the people that decided to do something about the thing that bothered them, the pivot they made. And so how are you better, not bitter? Because we have to go through something to get over it. The, the trick is not to get stuck in it, because that's where bitterness builds. And so we want to be able to go through it, get over it, figure out what happened, delete the need to understand why maybe, but okay. And then say, okay, now what, what can I do with this? How can I help? I think we've all lived to tell about something that we've been through. So I'm a woman of a certain age and um, I started my career very young in my early twenties, just to give you some perspective, that was the mid 1980s in a man's world in sales. And let me tell you, wow. it's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. Um, and those were stories I didn't tell for years and years and years because I thought there's no point to them. But I use those stories now, particularly in keynote talks, to talk about what it was like to feel like that um, at that point in my life, at that point in my career. And I don't use it for a poor me, look at what I went through, look what I overcame. I use it because a lot of people feel those things. They feel like they don't have any power and that the power is taken away from them. And then if they can recognize that, that other people feel that way too, and it is okay to do things, I think that's, uh, I think that's for me, that's why I try to use my stories, particularly particularly in keynote, but oftentimes in marketing, I use them too. Like, this is what I went through and this is how I think that possibly it could help you. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's fantastic. And and what what calls to you is for you. So if it didn't feel right until recently to share that, I remember what that was like. I was born in 63. Okay. Oh, I'm older than you. <laughs> so. That's hard to believe. <laughs> you look great. Um, but yeah, we didn't have a lot of options back then. You were going to become a nurse, a receptionist, a stewardess, or a wife, pretty much. Secretary. And it was a struggle. And I think that your willingness to share that is fantastic because, as I said, vulnerable is valuable. And, it, and helping others to say, ah, I'm not the only one who feels, even if there's a world of options, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. But, but Nancy understands that. Yeah, that's been a that's been an interesting um, point of growth for me personally. Being comfortable sharing that because, again, having the the path that I went through to get to where I'm at, which is all good because it led me to where I am now. So, um, no regrets. But I didn't think that my voice, my story, mattered for a very long time, and it it really took taking that leap of faith and starting to use both things, both my story, and there's multiples of them, I, I use them sparingly, and my voice to show people you're valuable, your voice matters, you can make a difference, and if something doesn't feel okay, it's probably not okay. Yeah, yeah, well said. So I, I think that that, I, and I only bring that up, this, this podcast isn't about me, it's about you, and I'm sorry, I don't usually talk this much, but- um, Oh, I've, I tend to do that with people. <laughs> I get that. I get that sense. So let's talk about the Rattled Awake series, because okay. I want to know why you started it, what it's about, what it means, and why other people might be interested in potentially participating. Thank you. That's Those are great questions. Um, so the, the term, the title, I was talking to a friend and I said, surely other people have been rattled awake like I have. And he said, that's a great title. And in 30 minutes we had a dot com. Okay. Because I, I, and he, and he helped me, you know, it's always an, it's almost always a third party who sees more than we see for ourselves. Yeah. And he made it uh, a feasible idea to write a chapter or an article in a weekend. And um, so that's, that's the premise of the, of the workshop. Um, but but a bigger picture, the, the, the one that keeps me going, it, 
is what happens for the authors. Um, the changes that I've seen in them. Uh, that's what brings me to tears. And um, what happened before all of this for me was that I paid someone $2,500 and it was a collaboration nightmare. It was awful. And I've, I, I was absolutely crushed. And I threw out the 90 books that I pre-purchased unseen. It was an embarrassing book. The treatment that I got was horrible. And I didn't want to have that happen for anyone else. So I wanted to become the, partly the solution for that. The other part of that is that I was, I know the value of becoming a bestseller. I know that it opens bigger doors. It helps you raise speaker fees. It, it can, it can, it can do a lot for you. It, plus it gets the attention of your avatar, your reader. Mm -hmm. So I was pricing, this is some six years ago. I was pricing out the services that people offered and I remember crying a few times because I didn't have a spare three to five thousand dollars. I didn't even have a book yet. I was just looking at it and I was so discouraged. And I said, there's just no way this dream of mine's ever going to happen. And and then I I kind of got talent scouted by someone who was doing that work. And he saw that I was a good editor and even better at story development and content strategy. And so over the last five or six years, that's that's what I was doing. I was helping dozens of authors to find their voice, edit their document, do content strategy, and then help them get to get to that status that really makes a difference. And so that's what all of this does in, in a in a week, you know. So So I'm really curious about that because um I've been approached many times about writing a book and I'm always like, ah. I don't have time for that right now. I don't have the money. And quite frankly, the fees you mentioned, three to $5,000 sounds like a bargain to me compared to what most of them are, are charging these days. Um, so that's just to market a book you've already written. Oh, yeah. So yeah. To yeah. yeah. write a book and produce a book like I do is twenty five to 40000 Yes, yes. I, 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 I'm like, uh, right. what, are, what are those numbers? Because I've never heard them. But so how do you, and I know you have workshops about this, but, and you don't have to give away your secret sauce, but, <laughs> but I still want to know a little bit. I want to have just a little. <laughs> so how do you draw it out of people? How do you draw their story out of them and help them find their voice to tell what they, what's on their heart? <clears throat> there's a couple ways to do it. Um, one of them is what is the thing you're always saying to other people? You probably have an expression or some passion, some cause, something that really matters. So observe your own language. Another one is if you could, and I call podcasting the global microphone. If you could grab the global microphone, tap, 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 and say, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody, just, just one, I just want to say this. Blip. What would you say? And that, that on that spot, doing it like that often causes a person to go, Blip. <laughs> oh, that's what I've been wanting to say to everybody. That's what really matters. And, and then I'll, um, I, I got to tell you the most revealing thing, and I'd love for, for people to try this. And that's an exercise I call five rave reviews. And I want you, you know, when people, you know, they're going to turn over and look at the back of your book you know, or, or an Amazon review, what would you like to hear? What would you like people to say uh, about the chapter that you wrote? You know, these chapters, Nancy, they have the impact of a whole book. And in 10 or 15 minutes, a, a message is delivered. And so that's why it's important to be succinct. And so I have every, all my clients do this. And I say, I want you to write ideal reviews about what your readers will, will get, feel, take away. And I'm telling you, I still do it. Every time I conduct a workshop, I will still do this. And I can come back and go, holy, holy crap. I need to change this and that about what I wrote. Because what I really want out of this is completely different from what I wrote. So five rave reviews is a fantastic way for a person to get clear, real clear on what it is they're hoping to accomplish. 
Okay, well, apparently your fan club has showed up because I've seen oh. some very, very attractive. So, so Doug says, Lonnie is good at seeing inside of us, much clearer oh. than we can see ourselves. Love that, Doug. Um, Leanne says, good afternoon. And Nancy O'Neill has given you a bunch of hearts. So we got one more. So who else? Oh, and Chris says, good afternoon as well. Hi, so. guys. So anyway, I love that they showed up for you. Yes, me So too. I have to ask because... I would be a terrible hostess if I didn't ask. Okay. What's the one thing you say to people? You said, what's the one thing that, what's what's the one thing you find yourself saying often to people? They go in tandem. It is, um, and this is after uh, 40 plus years of analysis of why am I so messed up and how can I fix myself? I have come to the reasoning to, to delete the need to understand. What is is what shows up. What you make of it is what is up to you. And so again, that's that white pill mindset, which is, okay, it's like this. It's just like that. Don't get stuck on why. Delete the need to understand. Here's get what we can do because action alleviates anxiety. So I find myself saying that quite a bit. And also a, a question, um, how can I have more fun today than I ever thought possible? Because <laughs> that one. These are good questions. I like them both. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was, of course, you know, my mind goes, I'm like, oh, well, what would I say? And I think the thing I say more than anything else, and I guess you can take this anyway, but it's the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Mm. I think that it, I think that if you're impeccable in your word, in your personal life, it's going to carry through to your business life, et cetera. And even if you think you have two different faces or behaviors, you really don't, you have one and it's going to show up in all areas of your life. Mm. That's, I, that's just my, my one thing I do find to be very true. So um, authenticity is, is only everything for you. It is everything. Authenticity is, yeah. I mean, that's really the, one of the most important values that I hold, you know, near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's important to me and the people I associate with as well. So I find that people that aren't truly authentic, I just don't have space for them. I mean, I can be friendly with them, but they're not going to be, they're not going to be my people. Yeah, no, not so much. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> okay. So here is kind of my big one for you. Um, okay. What is your why? And I know that that's a, that's a beaten down question. I mean, you know, ever since Simon Sinek came out with his Ted talk, however many years ago, I mean, that's, that's the thing is, you know, what is your why? Most people don't know what their why is. They have one or they can tell you one, but it's not their real why. How do you get people to their true why and the essence of their story? Um, by I have springboard phrases and questions that I ask them. That I, I literally have phrases that they fill in the blank. Or one sentence might have three blanks. I'm sorry, I didn't pull it up. I, no, no, I it's all it's all good. I just I don't I, I'm it by again. I'm I, again. I'm I'm throwing some stuff at you that wasn't necessarily on our <clears throat> on our outline because because that's how I roll. It's all good. Um, it, it really is a matter of asking the right questions. And over and over again, Nancy, people say, "Oh, I didn't know I felt that way," or "Oh, I didn't I didn't know I thought that." And and I don't know if it comes from having you know, eight interview shows and being able to hear what, what they're not saying as much as what they are. And then pulling on that thread and going, what about this? And uh, in fact, I have a great example. Oh, this is a good one. I really want you guys to go check out this story. It's an, it's a uh, volume four of Rattled Awake and it's the front story uh, by Doma Nunzio. And you can see it for free. Go check out the free preview. Doma didn't have, he, he, he couldn't, he knew that he had content, but he didn't know how to put it. And he, all weekend, he was just, he was, he was very attentive. He listened, didn't write a thing. And I would enter, ask him some questions. And I said, you know, Doma, it seems to me that you also have this underlying mission message, if you will, for your daughter, for your 10 year old daughter. So how about because I believe you need to have an angle if you want to have an edge. Yes, I said, yes. here's your angle, dear daughter. And he wrote, he wrote a letter to his daughter as his chapter. It's really good. 
And he realized that hit, that was his why. Because of her. In spite of all the stories that he's told, many times he shared it, it was her. And that happened through the collaboration. And that's the beauty of everybody getting together and, and listening for each other and to each other and all those ears and eyes and hearts on the same page. Because the, the focus is over the last five years, what shook you? What rattled your cage? What did you do about it? How did you become better, not bitter? So it unites all of us. And so everyone's listening to everyone from that angle. And that's, I'm not going to take all the credit for doing that. Everybody does it for everybody. It's wonderful. <laughs> so it isn't that's, just me. That's beautiful. Um, I worked with a speaking coach last year because I had a really important keynote I wanted to give. And I think I spent the first three sessions crying um, because she, <laughs> so I only tell you that because I know how vulnerable and raw it can make you feel um, to really pull back the layers and get to the core yeah. of things. And they weren't things that I thought that I was, I didn't think that they would hit me as emotionally as they did. But when I was asked, why aren't you telling that story? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like oh, I can't tell that story. <laughs> oh, hon. <laughs> so, um, I like I, I, my heart is just is just honestly like just my heart is full listening to you talk about your authors and and how you um, how you bring them to the page and bring their stories to life That's along those lines. <laughs> along those lines, how do you? Because I know you do some ghostwriting as well. I mean, you help them actually make the words. How do you put them? How do you put yourself in their skin? Because you have to do that to some degree, I would imagine. For the ghostwriting jobs? Mm hmm I do. Um, it, it's a wonderful journey. It's also like climbing in somebody's drawers. Take that how you want to. Yeah. <laughs> I think it can get messy. Um, but I'm a research freak. And so, um, like with Kicking Karma's Ass, I, um, I listen to to her stories. I also was, became embroiled in her family and a lot of stuff going on there. And I, and I interviewed five other people as part of her world. So it was information, information, take it in, take it in. And in fact, a lot of people are out there just kind of like, I have all this content and I don't know what to do with it. And so some a, a ghostwriter is especially adept at taking all of that and then organizing it and making it work in a way that, that carries that person's voice. And then Patty had to give me feedback a couple times. She's like, I wouldn't say that. And I said, okay, let's rephrase it how you would, because this is not my book. It's yours. And so it's, it's a, uh, it, it really is creative nonfiction. Here's a great example in the back uh, the last chapter for Patty. I had a, a, literally, I had an inventory list of things, of topics, of messages, of, of all these points that had to be made. And I had this, what was left was this handful of stuff. And so, yes, there was a bar scene. Yes, there was a really old dude. Yes, there was a, a hooker. <laughs> yeah, no. yes. Darn it, you left that part out. <laughs> all, all this stuff happened. But as in creative nonfiction, which is what I love to do, I created a bar scene that allowed the characters to say the things that needed to be said, even though verbatim that isn't what happened of course so yeah it, it becomes I, I literally had i sounded very jersey for a while because of because of all the talk with patty so it's fun i've also had acting training and i'll tell you acting training is better than any therapy i'll tell you you go deep on that and it's the art of being real otherwise you're acting and it shows and so the ability to to step out of your your own skin and become them them theirs is is it's some training it, ta it takes a little bit but it, who who else are you going to write from it's their book you know yeah. but it happens i know a gal who hired a ghostwriter and she's she's got that midwest accent I, she's from milwaukee and her book sounds like the old british dude that wrote it for her. i i know it's sad <laughs> that, it's that i have a girlfriend that wrote a book and um there was an art she'd been interviewed and there was an article written about her 
And she sent it to me. She sent me the, like the quote out of it. And she's like, I didn't remotely say this. It's so bad. And I mean, I've seen that time and time again, where writers just take on their own point of view and almost discard the person that they're supposed to be telling the story about or, you know, their own voice. And I read it and I was like, that is not even possible that he did that. And, you know, it was, it was kind of crazy, but um, I have seen that on multiple occasions. And I do love the fact that you have acting training as well, because again, my voice coach had acting training. Yes. And so there was a lot of that, that she, that she gave to me in the process. And I, I will tell you, um, oh, you, do you just have a huge fan club? So I can already <laughs> tell we're going to be working together at some point, but uh, Thank you guys. It, it, um, I, that was really helpful to me as well. Just her perspective from again, almost embodying another person, even though it's yourself and your story, but you're telling it from a different perspective. Yes. It was just so fascinating to me um, to go through that process. And I'm so thankful that I did because I really learned a lot from it. Yeah, that's awesome. That is ideal training for you. Yeah. Okay. So last question on the books before we kind of move on to a different section. So you, I mean, obviously we've, we've seen your fan club showing up here. Um, <laughs> You work with a wide variety of personalities, wide variety of backgrounds, wide variety of stories. How do you know if somebody's a good fit for what you're trying to do? Um, I, I look for someone who's standing on top of their story um, and, and is ready to share it from that perspective. Um, it's, in Rattled Awake, it's an article, it's a chapter, it's 2,500 words. You know, there's there's not a lot of space to tell your whole life. And so I look for someone who's who's really got, and maybe it's a general idea. I went through this and I don't know what to make of it. And then so this hour long conversation that I have with every single person before they're in the workshop is story development. And so I look for, first of all, what's your big picture? Where do you want this to take you? Okay, great. Does it? Okay. All right. We're, we're not going to do any, any, you know, red or blue politics. Okay. You're good with that. Okay, good. Um, so I do have a couple limitations on, on what we're willing to, to yak about. Um, and then it's really, um, is it something that they really want? 80% of people say that they want to be an author of that 6% will try, we'll put pen to paper. And of that six, only 3% will ever publish. And I think that's because there's 72 steps in, in creating a book. It's overwhelming. And you're just still trying to figure out what your message is. So there's, you know, there's that overwhelming, daunting task. But it then it becomes a personality thing. And, and you know, where's your heart at? And it's it, it, I haven't turned away anyone but one person. And she decided herself. And, um, and I appreciated that she did. Because I wasn't trying to call out major hospitals for a failure that they did in her health care. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, that's not the story you're telling. Not really. Uh, I, I really I, cover issues. I love talking about the issues like food. Um, you know, it rattled me awake that 2000 food processing plants burned down in the last 18 months and few people know it and they're not coming back and we really should be stocking up. And so I, you know, I ring the triangle on the porch about that. Uh, hear ye, hear ye. We got some problems over here. You know, we need to, y'all need to know about this. Anyway, so. So, so when I started my podcast, um, the name of it is Recipe for Success and which has nothing to do with insurance or anything else that I do for a living, but it has to do with one of my passions, which is cooking. And one of the things that, um, stop that. um, one of the things that I learned in the kitchen, and I love this because we're going to talk about you in a second. Um, <laughs> I was standing there doing something. I don't remember what it was, probably creating some recipe that came out of my head. And I was thinking about the fact that in when you're cooking, there's always one ingredient or one technique that's critical to the outcome of whatever it is that you're making. That's the success of your recipe, of your dish, whatever you want to call it. And so then, I, then of course, that's rattling around in my brain and I'm like, but the same thing is true in business and life. There's always something that is your secret key ingredient. So that's how I decided to name the show Recipe for Success. But the cool part is I'm slamming my microphone now. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> you are a culinary school graduate and wrote a book 
I had to write this down and taught a class. Sorry, maybe it was the class. Lay menu, ordering the life you want. That's exactly where I, where my idea was when I came up with the name for this is that life is, life is what you make it. There's all these ingredients out there and there's all these ways to put it together. And it's really up to you to create what you want. I took it a little further when I, I was honored. I was, it was the learning annex. It was back in the early 90s. And they they put my class on the back cover. I had no idea what, what I was really on to at the time. I just liked food analogies. And it was based on the idea that life is like a restaurant. You just have to know what you want so you can order it. If it's on the menu, you can have it. And um, so in the class, we created, I re- assigned all the categories hors d'oeuvres became something else and you know desserts just desserts for other parts of your life and it it was um i started studying metaphysics and stuff when i was 20. so it was sort of a spiritual kind of spin at that time in my 30s and i said now just picture it the universal waiter comes up to your table and takes your order and then he goes to the universal kitchen that rearranges itself to make your order to suit it usually they get it right. And then ta-da, it shows up at your table. And I believe that life is that magic. And so let's make our own menus because life is like a restaurant. So. I love it. And I, for some, I don't know why, but I love food analogies. I just find that there's so many between the kitchen and outside of the kitchen. Yes. So um, wonderful. All right. So um, we're going to move on to the five burning questions. Okay. And my favorite one, which is always my first question. I already know the answer to the second half, but I have to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> what is your absolute favorite food in the world and can you cook it? Um, it is brie and croute with, uh, uh, so brie wrapped in puff pastry. Um, I, use, I also had a career in, in catering, 25 years of it. And so yeah, I got to have a lot of this and I'm jonesing for it because I know I don't make Sounds it. It's so yummy. It's so good. You cut the slice, you slice off the top of the brie wheel. You, you, you put brown sugar and pecans in it, pop that lid back on, wrap that puppy in puff pastry, and then be patient. Because when that comes out, mwah, mm. chef's kiss. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, cheese is one of those things I cannot live with in my life. Without in my life, it's you know, it, I would just never make it on a, on an island without cheese. So, um, I'm with yeah, you. especially soft cheeses. Mm. Oh, I still take uh, a lot of shit from my culinary friends because I'll eat Velveeta all day long, and they're just like, eh, "Can you do that?" I'm just, I don't care. Well, it does make the best grilled cheese sandwich I, in the world. Hundred percent agree. <laughs> so. um, okay, so here's a more serious question: What character trait do you admire most in other people, and why? I like stand-up guys. People that are um, have a, a backbone. They're not weak-willed. They're strong. They're well-informed, and they are willing to uh, open the dance floor, as I call it. I mean, we've all been at a wedding, and everybody's like, "Oh, I love that song," but nobody will get up. Well, I will be the be this. It's literally a stand-up guy at that point. But be the person that opens the dance floor, opens the opportunity for other people to to speak up, stand up, boogie down, whatever it is. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So if I turn the mirror on you and I say, what's the quality, the character trait in yourself that you are most proud of and why? Oh, um, and yet, always a surprise question. So yeah, you, you didn't, that right you didn't there, miss didn't you? <laughs> Um, I would say that um, I'm like, you know, a human Super Bowl um, because I've been bounced down a lot and um, keep coming back and just like a Super Bowl, the harder you throw them down, the higher they come back, right? So your point of view is is even better. And so um, it fits uh, suits with uh, my my wish someday, God, please make this all make sense. And I hope that I can, um, you know, help somebody because I believe I've lived to tell about this too, whatever that is. Mm, and that's beautiful. That's how it's worked out. Yeah. Okay, so if someone has a story they want to tell and they're not sure where to start, what piece of advice would you give them? Talk to a story coach, story development person. Talk to somebody in the business. Just talk to them. It doesn't, it's not like they're going to reach in your purse and make you pay something. Just talk to them because someone else can see more for you. Your family and friends, unless they're in, the world of publishing, which is different from being in the world of writing, 
you want to have somebody who knows the both sides because uh, there are people who come out with great ideas but when i talk and i say look here's the logistics in producing that concept it may or may not still be what you want to do but at least you got to talk about it right you know and and as far as you know well should i write this or shouldn't i have that conversation with someone who's already been where you are somebody who knows i mean we learn from other people's mistakes yeah but why not learn from their the people who are successful and have helped other people to get there because your idea of what your story might be about i'll give you an example um 84 year old ghostwriting client came to me with volumes of of uh, 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 photos and stories about his military career and he said i I, 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 this could be all about the Navy and he had a very unusual job. Okay. Very covert, very interesting job in the Navy. Coast Guard. Sorry. Coast Guard. Doesn't matter. You don't care. <laughs> the point is that he, he said, I, I, I don't know. I don't want this to be a book about the Coast Guard. And I said, okay, so let's figure out what it is about. And as we spoke, as we spoke over, you know, a few hours of time, he said, this is really about me having it work out, even though it shouldn't have, and I'm still here. I'm like, yeah, you did that over and over again. So that's the message. And that's the angle that I'll write his book from. So yeah, that's amazing. All right. So this is a fun one. What's your secret talent or something people would be surprised to learn about you? I think, um, I have a knack for manifesting things, just weird things like, I don't know, chicken or egg first, Nancy. I got it in my head that I needed a camo onesie. And um, and then my <laughs> intuition, yes, I know, I know. Call it Tennessee, call it, I don't know, it, um, casual prepper now. Um, <laughs> and my intuition, I'm sitting here typing one night and it's like, go, go now. And I was like, okay, there's two stores, show me which one. And I went and right there was a camo onesie. A men's camo onesie. So yeah, manifesting things. But really, honestly, I have one thing left to do. And and I've had this fantasy since I was little. And I still haven't done it. I'm ready. And I want to live out my little house on the prairie lifestyle. And I don't want to pump my own water. But I want everything else. I want the simplicity. And I just about had it when I lived in Alaska. Man, I loved it. And I would do that again in a second. I love that. Okay, last one. Okay. Who's the one per person, famous or otherwise, living or dead, that you would most love to sit down, have a cup of coffee and a conversation with? George Carlin, America's last pair of big balls. You know what I mean? He's just like <laughs> comedians telling it like it is. I would love to talk to George Carlin. He'd be, uh, you know, that'd be a several weeks long sit down. I'm sure. I'm sure. That's a wonderful answer. I love it when people pull answers out that I was not expecting. So that was a good one. Um, all right. So for our audience, you have a workshop coming up um, for people to learn how to be an author, to be part of your series. Um, could you drop that link in the comments? Yeah, um, I would love to, except that it told me to connect to YouTube to do it. And I Oh, so um, you know what? I think let's let's try this because I want to make sure that everybody has this before we hop off. I can do it um, in the private chat for you if you can transfer it. But I sure can. I can. I can. There you go. Um, yeah, my, I had a little bit of connectivity issue at the very beginning. I'm not sure what was happening there. So, um, but you know, it's the wide world of technology. So who knows what's happening at any given time? I know. Uh, so hang on a second here. I I appreciate that. Um, so. This is an opportunity for people. And I just changed my head, my tagline yesterday, Nancy, because I thought, you know, it's a, I found it's it. a big, thank you. Thank you, dear. It's a big mm -hmm. enough deal to, to be the one who's going to put pen to paper and get it published in a week. It's, it's a big yeah. deal. Um, but those are usually people that are, have been thinking about a book. And so I wrote on my headline, I said, don't write a book. I should have put the word yet in there. Don't please start small because this it, it is 72 steps to get a book done and you don't do you want to learn all that it took me years come on so this is an opportunity over the weekend to really figure out and learn how it is that you can get that book done if you still want to 
because I'll tell you what, in volume, what are we on? Volume seven, <laughs> volume seven, guys, in this, in this one, we just, we just published volume seven. Oh my God. The stories and, and, and go to chapter two. It, you can see it on the preview. I'm just saying the, the, what comes out of people, they don't, is their surprise. And they thought, well, I might have a book kicking around in me. I might have it. So it's a, it's as much of a transformational experience as it is a writing workshop. And that's, and what, are, what are the dates of it? Oh, uh, April 5th through the 8th. Okay. The value and what, of it is 1100 bucks right now. It's on sale for 500. It's amazing. And what, um, what kind of time commitment do people have for this sort of thing? It's two hours on a Friday night for a meet and greet and then four hours on a Saturday and Sunday. And then Amazing. honestly, yeah, I know. Right. Then the, the book comes to me. I do all the final edits, all the book production, formatting, publishing. And then we do a promotion on Thursday. And by Saturday, it's it's hit the ranks on the world's largest book selling site. Of, uh, you know, Amazon is huge and it hitting the top 100 in a category is a big deal. And uh that's what happens for everybody. That's amazing. Well, um, I did put the link in here. So I did, it was too big to put it up on the screen, but you'll see it in the comments if you rewatch this video. Um, also, please visit Lonnie's website, which is rattledawake.com, right? Official Rattled Awake. Official rattledawake.com. Please visit it. You can see some of these excerpts that she's talking about. You can hear, you can read some of the testimonials. I think you can see it from the people that have shown up for her. Um, her authors love her and uh, they're very pleased with the results. I love the fact that you agreed to come on this today, Lonnie. This is so amazing. I know this is not going to be the last time we talk, but I'm so happy to be here, girl. Thank yeah. you. And thank and you. thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, it's been a pleasure and I will see you all next week.